Hello and welcome. I'm Nancy Gardner. Glad you could be with me today. Today we're going to talk about your listing presentation and more specifically a listing presentation for the new consumer which we've talked about in previous webinars and which I always want you to keep at the forefront of everything you're doing. The new consumer. They're the new normal. Okay. So as we dig into this, and we got a lot of ground to cover today, I don't know how I can say this any more clearly. First, get your head screwed on right. Have you adapted to the new consumer? Are you still doing things the way you used to do them? If so, you won't make it through this. You won't make it through the stuff that's going to hit us square between the eyes. So what I want to say to you is, is your presentation persuasive? Now, how do we persuade somebody who's mistrustful, skeptical, a lot of times angry? I mean, how do we persuade somebody like that? We use data. That's why they want it. That's why it's the number one thing they say they want from us. Data. They trust it. Have, have you used a professional format? Why would you do that? Why do we need to structure our presentations? Because what's been shown is that structured presentations are not only, do they not only come across as more persua uh, persuasive and professional, but they also um, are remembered. People remember more of what you say rather than if you're, you know, dotting from one thing to another, back and forth, depending on, you know, whatever they're throwing at you. Again, are you using supportive data? When I say supportive data, what I mean is when you're giving advice and counsel, when, when you're, you know, this is support it with data. It's not enough for us to use data to, you know, explain our pricing analysis, but we also have to use it to explain market conditions, to explain any issues we're seeing in our market, even down to home inspections, which are causing a lot of you a lot of problems right now. Well, what I would say to you is, what's the percentage of fall through? Use your company's numbers. They're relevant. They're relevant. And if somebody asks you, you know, Susie, how's the real estate market? Are you able to say, well, year over year right now, the number of closed units is up 4% and our price point is up 5% from this to this. That's what they want to hear. Only two pieces of data do you need to put to memory every month. It's not too much to ask if we want their business. Does your presentation communicate value? Have you positioned it to be about them, about the things they care about, the answers they want provided? Or are we still all talking about how wonderful we are? Oh, Lord, please stop it. I have no doubt that you are wonderful, okay? But this isn't the place for it. You need to have a, a presentation that communicates value to the person who's going to pay you your fee. Do you use a consultative approach? An approach that involves them, that, you know, you can, you know, use stories, examples, things like that. Making sure all along the way that you are credible and that you are involving them, that they understand what you mean for them to understand. We all know what we mean by the words that we use. What we don't know is whether or not the person we're talking to actually understood us. And if we want to be effective, you want to make sure that you're aware of that. One of the things I'm always asking or saying to my, to my coaching clients is after I talk to them about something, I'll say, does that make sense to you? Use the same kind of a sentence. Is, do you have any questions about that? Is that clear to you? Involve them. Make sure they understand. This is your business, not theirs. Just because they live in houses doesn't mean they understand everything about them, okay, and, and what it takes to market and sell them. Are you using absorption rate pricing? Gang, sellers prefer this, and they view agents who use absorption rate to be more highly skilled and better trained than agents who don't. So if you're not using it, learn it and, and, and put it in into the mix because sellers look for it now. Now, I'm going to say this about absorption rate. 
there's some ways that it's taught out there that are not they're not correct it is not correct to use an absorption rate pricing analysis based on 12 months of market activity markets move more quickly than that okay that we you know we don't have 12 months is not representative of where we are today what I what I teach is two months of inventory and the only reason you go back further than that is if you don't have anything you know in that price point and here's the last question and people laugh when I ask this but it's so relevant if you were the seller would you hire you I did this when I was a broker I, I asked this question of my agents and Every one of them said they would hire the top agent in the office, and she was phenomenal, no, no question. But I said, then why don't you do more of what she does? And it never occurred to them. They all look at, let's take it apart and put it back together. There is no reason. This is all learned stuff. What, what my top agent at that time knew, she learned. And she kept learning. She was one for mastery like no one I've ever seen. And, you know, and a lot of us, we think we have a listing presentation. We never look at it again. Gang, listing presentations are your 45 to 60 minutes of fame. It's what it all comes down to. It's why you work your sphere. It's why you follow up and follow through. It's why you take your training. It all comes down to that listing presentation. And yes, we work with buyers, and we'll have, we'll have that for a topic on another day, but it really does come down to this. And yet, if we have it, you know, most of us do the same thing every time. We don't think to update, or we're looking for new ideas, or, okay, I could do that. Uh-uh. you got to have a structured, professional format. Okay, let's take a look at what that's going to look like for you. All right. There are five components to a, a professional presentation, all right? The first component, your pre-appointment questions. The next four are part of the actual appointment, the overview of market conditions, the marketing proposal, the pricing proposal, and the administrative aspects of the sale, which we'll explain to some degree at the appointment, but they will continue on as we, you know, pro, you know, market the listing and then, you know, hopefully get it under contract. So now let's unpack all this and let's take a real good look at what all of this means and, and how we want to update what we're doing so that we're effective with the new consumer today. All right, the pre-appointment questions, you know, so many times when I unravel with the client what went wrong in their listing presentation, it's right here. They didn't ask any pre-appointment questions. Big mistake. Big, big, big mistake. These pre-appointment questions that you have in your handout, and I'll go over your handouts a little later, but they're more important than they've ever been. They, they are the, the first opportunity you have to start demonstrating value. They, 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 di they differentiate you from your competition. The right questions, as I've taught you, communicate interest. They also communicate skill. Now, our charge there is that we want to learn how to ask these questions in a non-defensive, non-combative, you know, sort of amiable kind of way. And sometimes that takes practice. So the first question I have, obviously, for you is, you know, a, a sort of an introductory. And that's where you will say, you know, something like, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, this is Nancy Gardner with ABC Realty. I understand from Susie Jones, you know, a mutual friend, that you're thinking of selling your home. I believe she told you that I would be calling. How can I help you? How can I help you? Listen, listen, listen. You know, we, we hear so much about Q&A, Q&A, Q&A. Uh-uh. It really needs to be Q&L, questions and listening, okay? And remember that help is the universal action word. It's something we all respond to. That's why it's there. Semantics do matter. And so then when it's 
it's appropriate. You can tell when, you know, they're sort of done telling you what they want to tell you. Then you want to step in. This is where you'll start to take control. And one of your best questions is, well, do you have any major concerns um, about selling your home in today's market? Why do I ask that right out the gate? Because what I've learned in 21 years of doing this work is that if you are talking to people and you have something you want to cover with them, in this case it would be your listing presentation, and they have something on their minds that they need to discuss with you, and I mean it could be something they saw on HGTV, let's face it, there's a lot of junk stuff out there, but if you don't address it, they don't hear anything that you're saying. And so your presentation's not going to have the effect that you want it to have. So when you hear it, you know, whatever their response is, sometimes they even may say, well, I don't really have any. Should I have any? And just say, not necessarily. It's something that I always ask because I want to make sure that if there is anything pressing about, you know, selling your home that you let me know first and I will take that off the table by explaining to you right then and there how I would handle it for you. Okay. I had one, one agent that I coach and he was talking to uh, a couple who'd lived in a house for 25 years. And when he asked them the question, they said, well, actually our, our big concern is the condition of the property. We, we think it's okay. I mean, we've lived here, we maintained it, blah, blah, blah. But we, you know, we don't know. We, we could have missed something, you know. And he said, well, let me explain how I handle that for my clients. What I will advise you to do is get a pre-listing uh, home inspection. And that will give you a list of anything, you know, large or small, that you may need to repair. Now, let me explain both sides of this. If you decide to get that, pre-list home inspection, which I do recommend my clients get because it's going to, you're going to find out sooner or later. So it's going to be pay me now or pay me later. And whatever you find out, if you don't fix, you will have to disclose. So I want you to understand that. Well, they, this couple that I'm alluding to, they were so relieved. They said they almost didn't care whatever else he had to say. They were ready to list with him. And he said, you know, I really appreciate that. And they said, you come so highly with me. He says, yes, but you're going to pay me a lot of money, and I want to make sure you know what you're getting for that. And he got umpteen referrals off of that because they thought he was so spectacular. So, you know, under, understand that's why you ask that. All right? And then, you know, explain what they can expect working with you. Why? Because they want to know. Because they say all the time, I wish they'd cover what they're going to cover. I wish they'd tell me what, what, you know, what, you know, what they're going to do. You know? And one of the reasons they preempt you a lot is because you don't tell them what you're going to cover. So they're wondering, okay, what's your fee? Okay, what, what are you going to do here? And that, what that does is takes you out of your track. And it lessens what you're saying to them. You want to have control. And so it says here on the, on the pre-appointment question handout, first I'll ask you a few questions so that I can prepare properly. Then I'll come by and preview your home, which takes me about 15 minutes. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll set an appointment for the actual listing presentation, which takes anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. And now it says on the questions that we'll do it here in the office. Some of you have adopted that. Others have not. It is your call. I will j just tell you, if you can hold the listing appointment in the office, you do have home court advantage. You are in a professional setting, and it does set you up that way. Plus, you've got anything there you might need, um, you know, just in case. And so then, you know, you're going to give them an overview of what you'll cover, you know, and then how long have you owned the home, the property, and all of these are questions. Now, you may revise some of these you may add to this because of what's going on in your market okay i worked in specific high-end condo markets where we had to address types of ownership 
Uh, we had to put that in there. Th that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Now, you get on down here. Um, you are asking, what are your expectations for getting your home sold? Listen for pricing and time frame issues. This is going to give you a heads up. It's not doesn't mean that they're insurmountable unless they tell you they are, and even then sometimes you can unravel it. Um, but it's going to help you prepare. The answers to this will help you prepare. It will kind of know where your objections are going to be, where you really need to have supporting data, etc. And then one of the other questions that I really think it's important to ask is, are you interviewing other agents for the job of selling your home? If so, who? Okay, don't be afraid to ask that. That's a normal question. And if they say, well, why do you need to know? Just say, it's part of my preparation. Because it is. Because you're going to pull up that agent's data. And, oh, by the way, if you can't find it, I, I don't know where you live. Because the data on all of you individually is everywhere. Why don't you try HomeSnap, the HomeSnap app, which just got a whole new round of funding. And it is the number one app that agents, brokers, and buyers and sellers are using. So if you haven't tapped into it, you want to. And it's going to give them all the information on you. But it will give you information on other agents in terms of their production results. And you'll know that their strengths and weaknesses so that should you need it, if you're up against an agent who buys listings and goes through six price reductions before they ever sell, you need to know that. It'll help you prepare. You don't, you don't, you know, you're not negative about that agent. You only compare results. That's all. That's a professional thing to do. Okay. So those are your pre-appointment questions. Again, more important than ever. And, oh, God, by the way, there's nothing that says that when you're in an open house and some neighbor walks in and says, do we want to take a look at their house? We're thinking of putting ours on in the spring. You can't start asking some of these questions really what you know that's interesting what concerns do you have about selling in today's market might learn something and you're certainly talking to them about what's on, important to them you're not selling you're asking questions so that you can learn how to help them that's what professionals do all professionals qualify it's how they know how to help people don't be afraid of it. I don't know how you work today without doing that. All right. So we've asked the pre-appointment questions. We've set our appointment to preview. We've previewed. Remember, if the seller's there, don't forget to ask them, you know, what have you loved most about living here? Because they'll want to make sure you know it, and it'll probably also be something that will appeal to the next buyer. When you're previewing, go through, look for any maintenance issues, make notes of things that need to be done to market that property properly, including staging, if that's appropriate. And staging is on the rise. In some markets, it's an absolute must. In others, it's about 60-40, mm, and in some, it's just being introduced. But staging, the, all the numbers support, in our market here in the D.C. area, I've got a company that tracks these numbers, and we know that staged homes sell 34% faster than homes that aren't staged. Again, data to support the advice. Okay? All right. So we've previewed the property. We've given them, you know, uh, a list of vendors if they need it. We may, you know, supply them with a list of, of items that we saw. I also like... Um, you to call back and confirm the appointment. It really does set the tone. It really does set you apart as a professional. Okay, again, I love the appointment at the office, but if you can't do it, you know, um, then set the appointment at their home. Make sure, you know, um, to dress as a professional. Okay, you're being hired to do a job. You're handling the largest single financial transaction most people make in a lifetime. All right. And certainly always dress a level up from the client if that's all you can do. But dress as a professional. All right. 
Now let's let's talk about the uh, appointment, which is the listing presentation. And you'll have that handout whether you're a franchise company or an independent. They're, both of them are there, and I'll go over the differences when it's time, but just understand that um, there is one for each of you. Okay. First part of the appointment, you know, make introductions, determine where you're going to go to make the presentation, conference room, your office, whatever it is. Please determine the seating arrangement. I, I'm amazed at the number of people that still don't realize this. Most of the time I see agents sitting at the head of the table. You're going to feel like you're at Wimbledon the whole time, back and forth. Sit across from the clients so that you can watch body language. You can watch both of them. Listen to both of them. All right? You'll miss things that are important if you don't. Sit across from the clients. Okay. Also, establish a time frame. It's, that's a very courteous thing to do. None of us have you know, as much time as we'd like anymore. So let them know, you know, given your questions and concerns, normally this presentation takes between 45 minutes and an hour. Boom. There you go. Okay. Now let's get into the, the actual appointment. Start with an overview of what you're going to cover. All right. Remember that you're doing that because it helps them understand they're going to hear everything they want to hear and 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 they listen better they're they're not worried about we hadn't talked about this or he hadn't mentioned this or whatever so you say mr and Ms. seller for today's presentation i will be covering market and financial conditions uh, my production uh, results for my clients my marketing proposal my pricing research and analysis how you can be represented in the sale transaction management and close of the sale and an explanation of my fee. All of that I will cover today and any other areas of concern that you might have. Remember, you are setting the stage. You are establishing credibility each and every step along the way. Okay? It's not just in marketing and pricing. It's all along the way. They're learning to trust. They're learning you know what you're doing. They're learning that you're skilled, that you're professional. Don't underestimate that. Okay, so let's look at the market and the financial overview. Please explain market data. And I'm not, I'm not talking about diving deep. I'm not talking about going into the absorption rate. I'm talking about explaining the market data as it affects them. Remember, always position it in terms of how it affects the person you're talking to because that's what they care about. So if you're saying, you know, Mr. Mrs. Seller, right now, we have um, record low, low inventory in our market. In fact, most of our inventory sells, if it's priced right, it sells in 30 days or less or 45 days or less or whatever it is. Now, I'll go into the specifics on this property when I get to my pricing proposal, but that's what's happening in general. Our average days on market is this. And, you know, and so what that means is you don't have a lot of competition for your property. So you are in truly a seller's market. Now, if you haven't heard me say this before, hear me say this now. Please update your time frame for what constitutes a buyer and seller's market. This notion that a property can be on the market five or six months and it still be a seller's market is laughable, gang. Laughable. That's us not doing our job. Uh, that's us taking the listing and, you know, eventually it'll sell mentality. No, 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 no. We live faster today. Good grief. We can get things delivered from Amazon in a day. You know, look what we get online, instantaneous, or we go to where we can get it. We can't think that that old way of doing business is going to fly today. It isn't. It isn't. Three months, maybe four tops, depending on your, you know, your market conditions, is where we move from seller to buyer and buyer to seller market. Anything beyond that, you're not doing your job. So rethink it. Um, and so, again, position market conditions as they affect them. A lot of inventory, which means they have a lot of competition, okay, for the sale of their home. And just say, I'll get into the specifics on your home and price point in just a minute. But that's, in general, that's what's happening in our market right now. 
The other thing you want to do is cover any lending issues. In most markets right now, lending's in a pretty good place as far as I know. Really, the, the area we're having more problems with is home inspections more so than, than lending. But if there were any, if they, you were starting to see appraisal issues or whatever it is, um, or lenders all of a sudden got nervous and were requiring higher, higher down payments or blah, 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 that's where you'd explain it. Then you want to cover your production data. And what you say is, and by way of my credentials to do this job for you, let me explain the results I've gotten for previous clients. And I'm going to use the last 12 months as my reference point. And that's where you go into your production data. And you show them what you've done. That tells them that you know what you're doing, gang. There's nothing wrong with that. Why shouldn't they be able to, to know that? You know, I mean, they're going to pay you thousands of dollars. Probably ought to have some idea that you know how to do your job. Another thing you want to explain is your representation in your state. You know, it varies by state. And, you, you know, you want to obviously paraphrase this. You don't want to be, you know, party of the first part, party of the second part. You want to simplify this. And really what they're looking for is sort of a summary of what you can and cannot do for them. Now, the reason this is important is because when sellers were surveyed, they, they said, a, you know, how they were represented to them was their rights in the transaction, and nobody's covering it. I was training this one time, and I had a top agent say, well, when you figure out the agency laws in my state, explain them to me. She didn't even, she didn't even go there, and she didn't try. Today, that's not acceptable. We can't do that. They, they deserve to know. But again, you don't have to have anything long drawn out. We're not talking about, you know, giving them the Dead Sea Scrolls. We're just talking about, here's what I can do. Here's what I cannot do. All right? And, it, a, and an agent that brings a buyer in our market, this is what them representing them means. I'll cover it again when we get an offer. But roughly, that's what it is. If dual agency is allowed in your state, and your company allows it, and you do it. This is where you explain it, and you also explain, I will cover it again if it comes up, and I will make sure you understand it to the point where we sign off, you sign off in writing that you do, and you, and you will allow it. Blah, 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 blah. Okay? That, now you just set the stage. Now you just told them, I know what's going on in my market. I know what's going on in lending. I know what I'm doing in my work because my results show that. And I want you to understand how you can be represented in the sale. Blah, 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 blah. That's it. Okay. Next part of the, of the uh, listing presentation is your marketing proposal. I've got this so simplified for you guys. If you haven't heard me say this before, you are going to love it. I promise. Um, it's so interesting that, you know, we've increased our use of technology, and technology, don't <clears throat> get me wrong, it's a fabulous tool. I love it, especially when it works for me. Um, but it's, we're also being told that we're not personalizing enough, that we are turning too much over to technology, and if we continue to do that, um, we are going to um, end up giving our job away. And so I'm going to ask you to really rethink this. And the marketing proposal is a great place to start because the new consumer wants to see what you're going to do. Okay? They're kind of the show me people. Remember they don't trust? Remember they're skeptical? So put it in writing. Put it in writing, people. This is so simple. And I'm going to tell you how to simplify it so don't get overwhelmed and start hyperventilating. This is so easy. A lot of the people I work with use an actual 30-day calendar. They print it out from their computer. They use iCal if they use a Mac, or they use Outlook if they use a regular PC. And they literally hand write it in when it's going to occur. List everything, everything, everything you're doing. Include your digital marketing, when it comes live, everything you're doing, where you're positioned. Okay, and also add redo the pricing analysis at least at 30 days. In some of your markets, that would be too late. You'd move it to two weeks, okay? And some of you that are in resort and second home markets, you can go out to 60 days. So it's, it can be relevant to your market. But put it in there 
so that they see that it's planned if they don't if they're not under contract if they don't have any offers okay now let's talk a little bit more about this calendar because this is you're going to love this okay and your clients are going to just sing your praises all over the place um what i suggest that, that people do in an office is get together and come up with a list of every possible thing you could need to do to a house now remember this calendar includes pre-launch i'm sorry i didn't put that on the slide it should be there it includes pre-launch guys we do a lot of stuff you know and yet we don't know what our value is and we we don't we don't define it and i always say women are the worst at this because we're used to juggling 14 plates in the air at any at any one given time and we don't have time to tell people what we're doing we just go get it done well here's where you need to tell people this is where you need to put it in writing in black and white so they can see it now i've heard agents say but nance my penmanship is terrible nance you know i can't get it all on you know and they have to squeeze it in there i said oh well that's a terrible problem to have you know i mean the reason you want to do it this way and you can you know you can type it up on the computer if you want but the calendar visually has an impact okay it has an impact and even though in pre-launch we know obviously we're not going to take photos a photo shoot or a video if it's pouring down rain or if it's snowing up to our eyeballs or whatever we're going to postpone obviously if the painter can't come at the specified date and he cancels and reschedules we got to redo the carpet people we know that and we allow for that now this is based on and this is how i say to say it this is the calendar the marketing calendar i've put in place for this property now it's based on you listing with me tonight obviously if, if it takes you more time or whatever i have to move this forward but this is based on tonight and 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 when you do list with me, you know, I'll move this forward. And obviously, I would let you know if there are any changes, if there are any vendors that have to cancel and be rescheduled or the weather is not good for your photo shoot or whatever. I will always let you. They don't care. They don't even care. They're so excited. I've had agents say to me, Nance, they look at that thing. The husband and wife say, look at it together and say, are you really going to do all this? And they say, exactly. That's the marketing proposal I've put together for this property. You know, it'll go date by date. And, you know, and I may have to reschedule some things if somebody doesn't show or, you know, there's a weather delay or whatever. But that's it. That's what I put together for this property. Okay. That's what you want to understand. It is so powerful. It is so powerful. Um, now, on the handouts, if you are a franchise, I, this is where I have a little blurb for a franchise, and it says as needed, okay? And I give you, you know, about five things that you may want to include. It's up to you, okay? If you're not a franchise, you won't see this on the handout. You'll see company stuff. Now, all I've done here is tried to give you ideas of things that you could be doing. You, you, uh, you know, what your company does, what the franchise does, what you as an agent can do. One of the things down here on the, on the uh, agent list, it says phone all the agents who've sold property in the area and price range in the you know, past year. I had an agent say, God, Nance, I haven't done that in forever. And he did it and he sold one of his listings. <laughs> you know, we all know agents, you know, prefer to show houses they know something about. And, you know, half the time we have to feed them chicken salad to get them to preview. So, you know, why not call them up and tell them about the listings? Got a new kitchen and a new roof. If you've got anybody left over from the listing you had around the corner, bring them over. Think they'll, they, they may love this one. You know, blah, blah, blah. That's it. How simple is that? Doesn't cost anything. But these are all ideas for you, okay? And that's how I want you to use it. All right. Now, once you've gone through the marketing proposal, very important, very important. We don't know what shows they're watching on HGTV, okay? We know most of them are ridiculous when it comes to real world real estate. But what I want you to do, and I put this in bold in the handout, 
ask the seller if you've left any of their questions on how their home will be marketed unanswered. Please do that. Please do that. Because if not, you'll miss something. It may not amount to a hill of beans. But if they care about it, they care about it. And you want the opportunity to address it. So don't forget to ask that. Now we're going to segue. Segue means we're going to leave the marketing proposal and we're going into our pricing research and analysis. And so I've got a sentence here for you to do that. Now let's move to where this market is telling us your home should be priced in order for it to sell. Now you can say that however you want. That's just a segue. It's just suggested. But now we get to the pricing proposal. All right. You know what I want you doing, obviously, if you are using absorption rate, you need to pull an in-depth CMA. And what I mean is include all active. I don't care what's pending and under contract. I care what the buyer is going to be looking at because that's what they'll look at and determine which one they want to buy. Remember that you want to always convey Price is market determined. It is not determined by the seller, oh, they wish, and it is not determined by you, oh, you wish. Don't take that responsibility on. Markets move. Markets change. This is market determined. It's your job to read the market, to understand what it's saying, and to convey that to a seller. All right? Use data, data, data to support your conclusions. If you're using absorption rate analysis, you'll know that on the worksheet, I have you pull data on information that you don't plug in to the formula that you use on the report. Things like, you know, canceled and expired and withdrawn listings and the number of days, price point for those listings. So that when the seller wants to price up here and that's the price point that the canceled expired listings had, you can show them. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, the, the number of canceled and expired listings in your price point and in geographic areas similar to this is this many. And they were priced from here to here. They were on the market this many days, and then they were pulled. They never sold. Is that where you want your property? Okay. Data, data, data. Not your opinion, even though it may be a good one. Nobody's listening. They want data. And use a consultative approach. Show them the work you've done. Pull out the worksheet. That's fine. Again, that's personalized. Shows them you really did the work. Gosh, I can remember when all you used to do is throw it into the computer and it'd print out this gorgeous-looking CMA. Most agents really didn't have a clue. They just, you know, mouthed whatever the CMA said. With the absorption rate, you really do learn how to price, okay? You do. You know what you're doing, and you know why you're doing it, and it can make you fabulous at what you do. Um, and then also, lay out the prospect of a price reduction, okay? In some of your markets, you won't need that. You know, you're, everything flies off the shelf. But in other markets, that's not the case. Lay out the prospect. If... You know, I could have missed something. If something is changing in this market, okay, um, I will be back here at 30 days. Again, maybe it's two weeks in your market, 30 days. If you're in a resort or second home market, you may have 60 days, okay? But that's market determined, and you really want to consider that. Now, another thing I, I want to um, approach here when I'm talking about pricing, is something we call a leading indicator. And a leading indicator is something that is happening in real time in your market. I've had a lot of questions last fall from agents and brokers alike. Nancy, you think the market's going to change. You think, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And what I would say to you is, first off, there, you know, all the, quote, experts are saying 2018 should be a great year. Even with rates going up and with tax changes, they believe the economy is strong enough and the consumer is confident enough that we're going to have another good year in real estate. Um, 
I, you know, and obviously there are some huge, big things that could happen that are geopolitical or environmental or whatever, and we can't do anything about those. So, you know, I'm going to go with them and, and keep my fingers crossed. But there are some things that you can watch, and one is called a leading indicator. And that is, again, something that's happening in real time. Um, we don't have data for it because it hadn't happened, you know, until now, but we're seeing it happen. Phone stops ringing. Nobody's at open houses. Nothing's going under contract. It, it happened in some markets after the hurricane season early last fall. Stopped them dead as a doornail. We didn't know when it happened whether or not this was going to last or whether it was just a pause. Turned out it was a pause and October came roaring back. Um, but that was an indicator that we had to pay attention to. And so you always want to say, now, right now, this is what we're seeing. I don't know if it's going to continue. I want you to know about it. If it becomes an issue, I will certainly advise you accordingly. And another great thing that you can watch in terms of the health of your market is consumer confidence. Right now, it's at um, – it's – higher than it's been at any other time in this century. And it's and consumer confidence, strong consumer confidence always bodes well for us. Okay? Always does. And and so watch it. Your chamber of commerce probably tracks it. Okay? And and, and you want more regional or local information. You know, national numbers are great, but you want to know what's going on in your backyard, so try to find those and use it because that, that, that'll that tell you a lot, too. Um, the next part of our listing presentation is administrative. Contract to close. What happens next? Changes by market. Okay. Now, I know you guys have all been told that you should use more video, and you should. But you need to use relevant video, okay? I mean, I've seen some of these videos that go on for half an hour. And agents paid somebody a fortune, a videographer a fortune to take it. And nobody's going to watch it. The best part of them was the outtakes, okay? What I keep reminding people of is videos need to be relevant. If you want, you know, and if you're going to do a 30-minute video, I hope you're on somebody's roof setting your hair on fire and jumping off into their swimming pool because that's the only way somebody's going to watch it. And you got to kind of get, you know, your arms around this. Contract to close is a great place for video. You can post it on YouTube. It's the same video for, for all of your sellers. You can send them right to it, give them the link, okay, and they can go watch it. At the very least, you should do PowerPoint slides, all right? You can give them hard copies of those slides if you want. You know, send them to them via email so that they have it. Give them a hard copy in the seller packet. But let them know what's happening next because, according to sellers, this is one of the most stressful times from contract to close because they don't know what's going to happen next. They don't hear enough from you. And, by the way, it's a minimum of a weekly phone call to check in even when things are going hunky-dory and you think, you don't have anything in the world to talk about? Oh, yes, you do. Get on the phone. Ask them if they've got their boxes packed and if they've called utilities and blah, 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 blah. Check in. Let them know that you're thinking about them, that you haven't forgotten about them. Give them updates. Where are we with this? This was approved. The buyer got this. The appraisal came in. All of that good stuff. Let them know. Okay? That's the administrative standpoint. Some of you have transaction coordination. Wonderful. You know, what I say about transaction coordination is in most of the companies that have it, the transaction coordinator steps in and takes over the administrative aspects. I believe that that transaction coordinator that's handling it should have a business card and that the agent should give out the business card at the time of taking the listing so that the seller knows who they are, knows how to contact them. And I also believe that when that transaction coordinator gets the file, they should call that seller and make introductions. Just wanted you to know, my name is Susie Jones. I will be handling your transaction. You'll be hearing from me, you know, along the way. And, you know, if you have any questions, I want to make sure you have my number you, and my email address. You know how to reach me. All of a sudden, that person's real now, and there's a greater likelihood that the seller will contact them. 
Okay? Now, 30 days out, follow-up call. How are you doing? Your box is unpacked? You love the house? That's it. They know you've already cast your check. This, is, this really builds a lot of goodwill. Okay? You weren't just a dollar sign to them. And if they're not already part of your sphere of influence, add them now. And start sending them the you know monthly market data via email that hopefully you're sending everybody else in your sphere. Okay? That's how you do it. That's how you move it forward. All right. Let's talk about your handouts. Um, I just want to be clear. They're separate so, you know, that the pre-appointment questions are separate from the uh, listing presentation appointment. Okay, now there's one for independent companies. There's one for franchise. The only difference is when it comes to marketing, there is a little blurb on if you're part of a franchise, these are some of the things you might want to, you know, add in to your marketing or not. It's up to you. Okay. And the independent one doesn't have that. It has more reliance on the company and what the company's doing. Um, so in that presentation appointment handout, there's the overview, the marketing proposal with the calendar, pricing analysis, the administrative aspects of the sale, and the fee. Now, I didn't mention that. I should have, but I didn't. After the administrative aspects, then you then you're you know you're saying, Mr. Ms. Seller, and for all of these services that I have explained to you, I charge X percent. Now we all know commissions are negotiable, um, and they they can vary based on markets and companies, but that's what you do. And if the seller says to you, well, I was wondering if you, you know, would do it for this, and just say, well, what part of this presentation don't you want? And they'll say, well, I want all of it. And they'll say, well, then you got to pay for it. Now, if they're hammering you on fee, just say, well, now, if, if, if the lowest, if lowest fee is what's important to you, let me give you the name of an agent that I know, and she, he or she is cheaper than anybody in this market. I don't know of anybody that charges less than they do. But you might want to check their results. Don't be afraid to go there. Don't be afraid to go there, okay? It's your fear that, that throws up the, you know, the, the barrier to it. The, another handout you have is the listing packet, which is what the documents you'd leave for the seller. What I, I teach is that you know, I wouldn't leave that um, unless they've listed with you because all they'll do is shop you. And, you know, you know, other, it's real easy for another agent to look at something and go, yeah, yeah, I do that. Yeah, I do that. Uh, uh. And in terms of the delivery of the packet, that really is up to you. It can be, um, you know, competitive for what's going on in your market. Some people still do hard copy. Some people, um, you know, email it. Some people, you know, put it on a disc. They, they do all kinds of things. And so what I'm saying is do what's competitive in your market. Also consider the generational preferences of the client. That's very important. And then the final handout you have is the listing presentation checklist. And that's really sort of an outline so that you'll have so that you don't miss anything. You know, and it's real easy when you're in a presentation and all of a sudden something comes up and, you know, oh, you teach at such and such a high school. Oh, you know. My Aunt Harriet used to teach there. And then you go off, oh, I knew her and him and her, and then you go off into la-la land. How do you get it back on track? How do you remember where you were? That's the checklist. That's what it's for. Okay? And please remember, if there's anything you're doing there, because it's, you know, a competitive advantage for you or in your market, add it. For heaven's sakes, add it. This isn't, you know, this isn't cast in stone. It is a template for you to follow. It is based on how professional presentations are laid out, and it is based on preferences of the new consumer. I'm the one that does all the reading there so that you don't have to. And I can't wait to share a piece of research that was put out recently about what they really want. And, oh, by the way, both buyers and sellers of all age groups listed technology last. Mm-hmm. Just, just a little aside. We'll get into it later. Um, those are your handouts. Um, and then the last thing I would remind you of is please, please remember, 
We're in an information age. This is a knowledge-based economy. Always know more than your competition. Keep working at that. Know your competition's weaknesses. That's why that pre-appointment is questions there. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, who asked, who else are you interviewing for the job of selling your home? Communicates that you think of it as a job. It also allows you to prepare. Any areas where you're weak, and your numbers will show you this, gang. They don't lie. Your numbers don't lie. Go back, train, retrain, do training simulation. You'll get it. You'll get there. If you're motivated, you'll get there. All of this stuff can be learned. This isn't rocket science, I promise. Continue, continue, continue to evolve around the new consumer. I cannot stress how important this is. We will get left behind if we don't. We have an opportunity to hang on to what we do but only by getting better at what we do and giving the new consumer what they expect. Those of us that think we don't have to or that it doesn't matter, you know, I hope you're on your way out of the business because you will get left. There's too much information about you going online. And then the last statement is don't underestimate what it's going to take to win this. That could be the worst thing ever for your career and for your clients because we are going to see an extraordinary amount of competition, both online and off. Okay, you're going to hear about the iBuyer using Open Door. I told clients about Open Door two years ago. You know, um, other apps, you know, they're going to give um, people the ability to buy and sell without an agent. There'll be online platforms that offer that. There'll be new discount models coming out, full service discount models. How are you going to differentiate yourself? This is one of the ways. And we'll keep fine-tuning it and updating it. Okay, gang, I hope this has helped. It's been a pleasure. I'm so grateful you could join me today. You guys take really, really good care out there. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.